Hello, my name is Karen and welcome to this short yoga practice. Let's start with connection to the breath. So find a comfortable seat. You might like to be on your heels like me or in a cross-legged position. The other option is to lie down on your back so you're supported by the floor. So check that your spine is long, your neck in line with your spine. If you're seated, have your hands either on your knees or in your lap with your palms turned open. And if you're on your back, turn your palms open with your arms by your side. Close down your eyes, release your jaw and soften your face. The eyelids just gently close. Relax the shoulders back away from the ears. Observe the shoulder blades slide down a little. Sitting up tall, heart space open and bright. Breathe in and out through your nostrils. Breathing naturally, just observing the inflow and outflow of your breath. Allow the breath to be even and complete. Bringing our attention from the external world to the internal world. Trust that it is safe to go within. Let's take our attention to the lower belly. If you'd like to, place your hands there. And let's practice lower abdominal breathing. So inhale through the nostrils, the belly balloons out. And exhale. Through the nostrils, the belly deflates naturally. Calm the nervous system. Bring your full attention to the here and now. I invite you to practice the full yogi breath. So if you'd like to, place one hand on your chest and one hand on the belly. Continue to breathe in and out through your nostrils. As you breathe in first, the lower belly balloons out. The breath travels up to the chest and collarbones. And with the exhalation, the breath flows from the collarbones to the chest and then the lower belly deflates. Inhale, belly swells. Breath travels to chest and collarbones. Exhale, collarbones, chest, lower belly. So really filling the lungs to their full capacity and then emptying them, letting everything settle back from top to bottom. You can imagine that your torso is a container. You're filling it with water. And with the exhalation, you're emptying. Let's practice three more full yogi breaths or Maharaja Pranayama. And after the third one, return your hands to where they were. Just observing the effects of the full yogi breath. Gently open the eyes. Let's all lay down on the back. And have a block handy. We're going to lift our sacrum. If you don't have a block, then you can use a cushion. Bend your knees and have your feet on the floor. Lift your hips and place the block under your sacrum. So you may have it on the side, or you might have it on the flat end, so on the broad side. So find a setting that is best for you, where you can feel comfortable and supported. You might even have it up onto the highest setting, onto the narrow end. But be mindful, make sure that you're steady. Because in a moment we're going to lengthen out our legs. 
So once you've got that position, the block under your sacrum, just checking the skin's not being pulled in any places. And place the arms by your side with your palms turned open, checking that your neck's in line with your spine. Lengthen the back of the neck so the chin is down slightly. And I invite you to close down your eyes again. Just letting the body feel supported by the block. Letting the weight come down onto the block. Feel your hips sink. And there's just a subtle opening at the pelvis in the front body. If you feel discomfort, feel free to take the block or cushion out from underneath. So always tuning in with your body and doing what feels right. Stay in your comfort zone with your yoga practice. You'll still gain the benefits and your body will thank you for listening to it. So if it's all right for you, let's lengthen out the legs. Just checking in that you're still supported by the block. And again, close down the eyes and just feel how the pelvis is the highest point now. The body draped over the block. Just gently opening this area of the body which can be closed if we do a lot of sitting in our daily activities. It becomes tight and inflexible. So in our practice today, we'll do some back bends. So we're just inviting this part of the body to open up. Feeling safe with the front body open. Release fear. Trust that all is well in your world. You are fully supported by life. Let's take a few more breaths here in this beautifully supported posture. Encouraging the body to open with each breath. Gently open the eyes, bend the knees, lift the hips gently and take the block out from underneath and lower the back little by little. Let's take our arms out at shoulder height, bringing the knees into the chest. Take an inhalation and with the exhalation let the knees fall to the left as you gently turn the head to the right. With your inhalation, bring the knees and head to center and exhale, let the knees fall to the right as you turn to the left. Let's keep moving in time with the breath, moving meditation. Gently unwinding the body, using the exhalation to release any tightness or tension. even breaths without strain. So when the knees are next on the left side, let's just pause here for a few breaths. Feel free to bring your right arm closer to your body if that's more comfortable. I invite you to close down the eyes, taking the awareness within. Continue to practice lower abdominal breathing. Be mindful of any tightness in the body and send your breath to that part. And feel as if you're breathing in and out just from that part of the body. And notice how you can soften and relax. With the next inhalation, let's bring the knees and head to center. And exhale, let the knees fall to the right as you gently turn the head to the left. Again, closing down the eyes and going within. 
sending the breath to those parts of the body that feel tightness. Mentally scan the body from head to toe to discover those parts that need some guidance to relax. The next inhalation, let's bring the knees and head to centre. Taking hold of the knees, let's rock forwards and backwards. Massage your back. Let's come up to a seated position and directly onto hands and knees. So I invite you to turn your fingers back towards you to give your wrists a good stretch. If you feel discomfort, then feel free to have the fingers pointing forwards. We're going to stretch out our wrists, which will prepare our wrists for chakra asana later on in the practice. Cow and cat pose. Inhale, put the shoulder blades slide down the back and spread your sitting bones. Gently lift your chin, open the throat space. Exhale. Draw your navel up to your spine and arch your back, rock the head. Nice stretch of the back. Inhale, concave the back. And exhale, arch the back. Really simple but profound asana, cow and cat pose. Great way to coordinate movement with breath, bringing our full attention to the here and now. Improve suppleness of the spine. Really scoop up the breath as you inhale and concave the breath. Exhale, expelling any unwanted tension, negative thoughts or beliefs. Inhale, scoop up positive energy, prana, life force energy. Let's do one more. Inhale, scoop up prana. Exhale, come back to neutral spine. Let's come up onto our knees and give your hands a good shake. So let's take the right foot out. Left knee slides back. And with your inhalation, let's take the arms up. Anjaniya Asana. So we're pressing the pubic bone forward, the tailbone pulled down and under, the ribs draw back. Lovely hip flexor stretch. Just ensuring that your belly is engaged, that you're not letting the belly be soft and pressing out. We want to engage the core in this practice, in this posture. With your exhalation, let's take the hands to the heart. And let's prepare for a twist. Inhale, lengthen your spine, exhale, take the left elbow to the outside of the right knee, and let's twist round to the right, hugging into the imaginary midline between your legs. Be aware of the space between and below your shoulder blades, breathing in and out through the back of the heart. Let's release, taking the hands to the inside of the right foot. Let's walk the right foot over a little. Feel free to stay here or come down onto the forearms and interlace your fingers. Breathe fresh, oxygenated blood to your hip. Washing away dead cells, replenishing this area. Prana, life force energy. And let's release. Swinging that leg round. 
Let's come back up onto our knees and step the left foot forward. Sliding right knee back. Nice hip flexor stretch. Tailbone pulled down and under. Pubic bone press forward. Ribs drawn back. Inhale, taking the arms up. Scooping up positive, loving energy. Scoop up gratitude. Compassion. And with your exhalation, let's bring the hands to the heart. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Exhale, take right elbow to the outside of the left knee, using that as leverage to twist round. Spacious across the thoracic spine region, opening the space at the back of the heart, keeping your drishti, your gaze point fixed in one spot, soften the face and gaze, With your exhalation, let's release, taking both hands to the inside of the left foot, perhaps walking the left foot over a little. Keep your palms flat and arms straight, or come down onto your forearms and interlace your fingers. The breath continues to flow with steadiness and ease, practicing diaphragmatic breathing throughout your practice. Let's release. Swinging that leg round. Let's sink back to child's pose for a moment. Length along your spine. Spreading your arms out straight. Spreading your fingers. Pressing the finger pads into the mat. Let's curl the toes under. Feet hip width apart. Let's press up and back into downward facing dog. Adha Mukha Svanasana. So the heels may or may not touch the mat. You may have your knees bent with this first downward dog. And as your leg muscles release, you'll be able to straighten your legs and the heels will come closer to the mat. Just letting the head hang between the arms. Maintain your drishti, your gaze point, soft gaze. Let's bend the knees and look between the hands and walk up. Let's take the feet parallel to each other, the outside edge of the feet, and take hold of the big toes with your first two fingers and thumbs, so you're still gripping them. And with your inhalation, look forward, nice long spine. And exhale, let's take the elbows out to the side. You might want to step your feet a bit wider, have the outer edge of your feet parallel to each other. So you may have your knees a little bent like me, or you may have your legs straight, so just checking in with your body. It's a great hamstring stretch, this forward bend, waking up the leg muscles. Just letting the head hang, the neck relax, shoulders relax. Keep your eyes open in the forward bend. Let's release the hands and take the hands underneath the feet now for hand foot pose. So we want the toes right up at the crease of the wrist. One of the benefits of this posture is to stretch out the wrist. So make sure your toes are there right up on the, the crease of the wrist. Inhale, let's do a little lengthening, lengthening forward and exhale, fold back in as you were. Again. Checking in with your body, you might like to keep a little bend in your knees. Turning your half your body upside down helps to settle the adrenal glands. Very calming for the body to turn upside down. We 
really gain a new perspective when we practice yoga. It's not every day that we place our hands under our feet. So have some fun. Try something new. Trying something new on our yoga mat, then taken off the mat. We try new things in our life as well, knowing that it's all good. So let's release and let's come up slowly, grounding into your feet, and curling the back. And when you get there, let's take the arms up high. And with your exhalation, let's fold. Inhale, look forward, Adha Uttanasana, the hands on the floor, or you may have them on your shins, nice long spine. And let's step back to plank pose, right leg back. High push-up position, so body on one plane, feel free to lower to the knees for supported plank. Inhale at the top, exhale, we move the body forward slightly, so as we lower, the elbows are at right angles. Let's lower all the way to the floor, uncurl the toes. Inhale, curl the upper back for cobra. Shoulders pulled down away from the ears. Exhale, downward facing dog, pressing up and back. With the leg muscles a little bit more released, you can find that your heels are getting a bit closer, that your second downward facing dog is a little bit more comfortable for the legs. Be aware of the transformation throughout your practice. What seems impossible at the beginning of the practice can, can really change towards the end. Suddenly it becomes, becomes so easily and naturally. It really teaches us perseverance in our yoga practice. So let's bend the knees, looking between the hands, and either step or jump to the top. Looking forward, out of Uttanasana, long spine, and exhale, fold back in, letting go. Uttanasana, let's rise, rounding into the feet. Reach high to the sky, perhaps press the hips forward, and exhale, hands at your heart. Just pausing here, checking in with the body, pressing the thumbs up against the heart, and you see natural rhythm. Inhale, let's take the arms up high. Exhale, let's fold. Inhale, let's look forward, long spine. And let's step back to plank pose. Let's take the left leg back this time. Inhale at the top. Exhale, fingers spread, elbows hugged in. Let's lower to the mat. Uncurl your toes. Inhale, outer shoulders pulled down. Let's curl the upper back. Open the front for Ujjangasana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Fingers spread, pressing the finger pads into the mat like you're clawing the mat. Noticing your breath deepen. We keep practicing the automatic breathing, even and complete breaths. Let's bend the knees, look between the hands, either step or jump to the top. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold in. Round into your feet, let's reach for the sky, give you the sky hug. Lift out from your hips, press the hips forward for a back bend. Lower the hands to your heart. Let's do Surya Maska B. Inhale, chair pose, Ukta Tasan, sweeping the arms by the body. Chair pose, bring the weight into your heels, knees level. Let's fold forward, bring the hands through the middle. Inhale, look forward, nice long spine. And exhale, step or jump back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog this time, or feel free to do Cobra. Upward facing dog, pressing the chest through the arms. Hips, knees off the mat. Let's roll on to the toes, downward facing dog. And let's center the left leg and bring the right foot through. So we'll turn that left foot to a 60 degree angle. Bend your right knee. Inhale, warrior one. Letting the arms float up by the ears. Tailbone down and under. Ribs draw back. 
Feel free to bring your hands together and gaze up. So let's sweep the hands back to the mat. Stepping back to plank pose, inhale at the top. Exhale, moving the body forward and lower. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Pressing the heart through the arms. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's center the right leg and bring the left foot through. Turn the right foot at a 60 degree angle, left leg bent. Grounded through your feet, let's sweep the arms up. Rivadrasana one, warrior one. Ribs draw back, elbow down and under. Perhaps bring the hands together and gaze up. And let's sweep the hands back to the floor. Step back to plank pose. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. It really gets the heart beating, Surinaska B. A little more strenuous than Sun Salutation A. You can take your time and modify the poses whenever you need to. So let's bend the knees. Look between the hands, either step or jump to the top. Inhale, looking forward. Exhale, folding in. Bending the knees. Inhale, chair pose. And with your next inhalation, let's press up to stand. Exhale, hands at your heart. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, let's fold. Inhale, looking forward. And exhale, let's step or jump back to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. So let's lower to the knees. Sinking back to child's pose for a moment, connecting with your breath. And let's undulate the body to the floor. So let's prepare for Shalambhasana or Locust Pose. A great back strengthening posture. Taking your hands by your side with your palms turned open. Check that your spine is long. Lengthen out your legs to lengthen your lumbar. Place your forehead to the mat or your chin. And when you're ready, let's take the posture. Inhale, lifting the arms, the legs, the chest. Gazing forward, soft gaze and face. Like you're body surfing. Exhalation, let's release. Turn the head to one side and completely relax your body. And let's center the head once again. Chin or forehead to the mat. And when you're ready, inhale, let's take the posture a second time. If you'd like a stronger practice, bring your toes together. Soft gaze and face. Lifting high with the in breath. And with your exhalation, let's lower down and turn the head to the opposite side and completely relax. Place the hands under your shoulders. Let's press up and back to child's pose, balasana. Length along your spine. When you're ready, let's walk the hands up. So let's sit on our bottom for gomukhasana, cow face pose. It's a great way to open our front body and prepare our shoulders for chakra asana. So feel free to do either half cow face pose or the full posture. Let's place the left leg over the right. So we have left knee on top of right and the left foot, the left foot turned out by the opposite hip. So this is half cow face pose or you can bring 
the other foot by the opposite hip, maintaining one knee on top of the other. So we're going to lift our right arm and take it overhead. So you can encourage that hand down the back using the other hand. And when you're ready, let's take hold of the hands. So bringing the left arm up to catch hold of the right hand. If you've got a strap, you can use that to help you bind, or you can hold on to your top. So if possible, clasp each hand. Lift your chin. So have length from tailbone to crown. Feel free to close down your eyes in this posture. Follow the breath. Great way to open the chest. legs out and give them a good shake and let's take it to the other side so right leg on top of left this time with the foot turned out knee on top of knee feel free to stay here or bring the other foot around ground both sitting bones and let's take the left arm up overhead using your other hand to encourage the hand down the back as far as it's comfortable once you've got that, let's reach up and clasp hands or the top. You might like to use your strap. You'll find one side's easier than the other. When you're ready, let's lift tall, sitting upright. Feel free to close down your eyes. Find steadiness and ease. Exhalation. Let's release the arms, taking the legs out again, giving them a good shake. And when you're ready, let's lie down onto the back. And prepare for Septu Bandhasana. So bending your legs with your feet hip width apart. Have your arms by your side. Check that your neck is in line with your spine, keeping the neck centered at all times. Press into your feet and let's curl the tailbone up. Let's walk the outer shoulders in and perhaps interlace the fingers under your bottom. Press the pelvis forward up to the sky. Great way to turn the thighs and the buttocks and prepare the body for chakrasana. If wheel chakrasana is not appropriate, feel free to do this posture. So let's release the arms and slowly lower down, vertebrae by vertebrae. Take a rest breath here. Now let's practice another round with a variation. Press into your feet and curl the tailbone up. This time let's bend the arms and holding on to our waist with our hands to prop ourselves up. Pressing the pelvis up to the sky. Let's ground into our left foot and reach the right leg high, pressing through the heel, flexing back the toes. Gazing up at your toes, single-minded focus on your beautiful right toes. With your exhalation, let's bend and lower the leg. Ground into your right foot. Let's extend the left leg up. Gently pushing through the heel and flexing back the toes, gazing at your beautiful left toes. And with your exhalation, bend and lower. Let's release our hands from our waist and lo slowly lower down. Upper back, middle back and lower back. 
Lift your legs, cross the ankles, take hold of your knees and circle in one direction. Massage your sacrum. And let's circle back in the opposite direction. Come back to center. Let's release our feet. I'm crossing them and let's prepare for Chakra Asana, which is a great way to open the front body. It is a, an intermediate posture, so feel free to do an alternative pose such as bridge if it's not appropriate for you today. So you might like to practice the stages, taking the hands behind under your shoulders, fingers pointing back towards the body. So this may be as far as you want to go, just checking in with your wrists. And let's press into the feet and lift up onto the crown of the head. You may like to stop here. And if you're ready with your inhalation, let's press up. So you might like to be on the toes to begin with. I prefer to do that when I first get into the posture, walking the hands and the feet a little closer towards each other. So we all have different bodies. Some people's arms will be more aligned than others, so you'll see pictures of wrists under shoulders. But if your body's not ready for that, that's okay. You're still gaining the benefits of a beautiful back bend. So when you're ready, let's take the heels to the floor. And let's come out. So lowering the crown to the floor and rolling onto the back of the head. Coming back down, I invite you to let the knees fall out to the side, the soles of the feet together. And placing your hands at your belly. Sutta Bhadakunasana. Just observing the effects of the back bend. It really opens the front where some of the major chakras are. So the Svadhisthana chakra below our navel. A chakra of, of creativity, the birth of new ideas, our relationships with others, Manapura chakra, our solar plexus chakra, chakra that expresses our confidence, our expression, our right to be in the world, and our heart chakra. So the chakra of giving and receiving. And our throat chakra, Vajuda chakra, so our chakra where we express our truth and assert our will. And these chakras are open in chakra asana. You, often, you might feel a flood of emotion when you get into the posture. So let's see how we go with the second round. Bringing the knees up, the feet separated hip width apart, taking the hands under your shoulders, fingers pointing back to the body, feel free to stay here. So let's press up onto the crown of the head, grounding through your hands, let's lift up onto the toes perhaps, bringing the hands and the feet towards each other, checking in with your shoulders, lowering the feet, pressing the hips high, the chest high, the navel high. And that's relief. Lowering the crown of the head to the floor. Lowering the back of the head down. And let's come back to Sukta Bharakanasana and just observe. Open the eyes, bringing the knees in, hugging them into the chest lovingly, and rock from side to side to massage your back. When you're ready, let's 
lengthen the legs down, for Shavasana. Check that your spine is long, your neck in line with your spine. Letting your feet fall away from each other. Your arms by your side with your palms turned open. Close down your eyes. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Soften the face. And clench the teeth. Relax your neck. Feel the muscles of your back. And guide them to relax and soften. Relax across your chest and your abdomen. Letting the rise and fall of the belly with each inhalation and exhalation. Continuing to breathe diaphragmatically. Be aware of your hips. Allow them to sink down towards the floor. Allow the legs to relax, the thighs and calves. Loosen your knees. Release your ankles and toes. Let the whole body relax. Ride the waves of the breath to a deeper space of relaxation. So let's gently awaken the body. Take two deeper breaths. Hug the knees into the chest. And rock from side to side. Roll on to your right side and pause in the fetal position for a moment. When you're ready, using your hands for support, make your way up to the comfortable seats. I invite you to keep your eyes closed for a moment more, resting your hands on your knees or in your lap, palms turned open. Let's seal the practice with the sound of Om and Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om is the universal frequency. And Shanti means peace in Sanskrit. Peace for yourself, for your family, and the whole world. Let's take an inhalation from the lower belly. Oh. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you felt the effects of the practice, a beautiful opening at your front, ready to greet the world with an open heart. Have a great day or evening. Bye.